Kia ora and welcome back to New Zealand and in particular Cape Turnagain on the wild east coast of the North Island and it is absolutely beautiful. I've been here before, put a link to the video up there and it was the first time I shot with my Bronica ETRSI for quite a long time. I really enjoyed that shoot. It was only a quick one and I promised myself that I would be back here again. Cape Turnagain was named by Captain James Cook, a fellow Yorkshireman by the way, who on his voyage around New Zealand came from the north along the coast got to this point here, was battered back by horrendous winds, decided to turn the boat round and circumnavigate the country anti-clockwise. As he came up then from the southern side and he got to this same point again, he was hammered by winds, which the place is notorious for, and he decided to turn again and head back the other way. And hence the name Cape Turn Again. There you go. Now the Maori name for Cape Turn Again is Chiaho Amaui, which means the fishing line of Maui. Oh, what an absolutely glorious spot. What a great place to spend a couple of nights in the van. Now the reason I'm down here, a workmate, she was throwing out an old camera that she's had for donkey's years. And she said to me, she says, uh, I know you're into film photography. Would you like to take it? Hell yeah. Yeah, why not? She brought it in the other day. I opened the case. It's in a big silver case. And I opened the case. Oh my God. I mean, the claw was on the lid. And I'm here. When I opened the lid, there's a, a Mamiya RB67 Pro S. 90 millimeter lens, 180 millimeter lens, Polaroid back, a, a spare focusing screen, all the manuals. So she said, uh, do you want to take it and try it? I said, hell yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll take that, mate. No problem whatsoever. She said, we're just going to toss it in the bin. I, I said, what? Wait, whoa, hey, you're going to what? And then I told her, I mean, stupidly, I'm, I'm still kicking myself. My backside's sore when I'm kicking myself. I stupidly told her how much these things are fetching on eBay. Her eyes went like saucers, and I don't think that that's going in the bin now. So it leaves me with three options. One, I give her the kit back. She puts it on eBay. She gets quite, uh, quite a sizable financial return. Good for you, Chris. Well done, mate. Second option, I buy the bugger because... <laughs> I've not even tried it yet, but I love it. <laughs> I love it already. Third option, I just keep driving. I just keep driving, she'll never find me. I've got a van. That's she gonna find me. I just keep moving. Option three is looking good. What I'm not gonna do, guys, is give you an in-depth look at the Mamiya. Primarily because I've only just got it and I don't I don't know much about it other than the real basics. I've had a quick look around it and I've sort of figured out a few things and had to look online for a few other things. Saying that, I don't know enough about anything to give any sort of qualified opinions about anything. I'll give you a quick rundown of the main features or what I think are the main features. Enough waffle, we're going to crack on, have a look at the camera and then later on behind me there we're going to shoot that headland. We've got quite a few beach trees, not beach trees but beached trees, you know, driftwood. We've got quite a bit of driftwood on the beach. I'm going to be using Kodak Ektar 100. Get out for a bike ride before the sun starts going down and then we can uh, dig out the gear and go for a play. This is your waist level finder obviously, comes with a magnifier. Now once you've got a film in there, which I'll show you shortly, this is your charging arm. So you wind that forward, take out the dark slide, there you go. And we're taking pictures. We're not, we're pretending. Because 6x7 format, I can only get 10 shots from a roll of film. This is your lens, this is a 90mm lens. And the way you take these off is quite ingenious. You've got to cock the shutter, you turn this collar here until the red dots line up, pop it off, put on your next lens until the dots line up and then turn the collar and that is locked. F3.8 to F22. The front dial here, that is your shutter speeds, which go from one second right up to four hundredth of a second. You've also got a timed exposure. What I understand about this is it's kind of similar to a bulb in that you set it on T, cock your shutter, fire your shot, the mirror will stay open, exposing your film until you turn this collar to number one and then it will close. And I believe you can also slightly cock this shutter again to disengage it. These big knobs here, there's one at either side, one that side and one that side. That is how you focus this camera. It's on a bellows system. On the base of the camera, you've got the tripod mount. That's your shutter button, shutter release button. You can lock it to stop accidental uh, firings. Whenever this dark slide is inserted, you cannot take a shot. But you take this dark slide out, and she's off and running. To advance your film, it is on the film back here. So you'll just drag that in. You've got an exposure counter there. And it's got a little red flag in there as well, at the side of each number. That, say, say that's frame number five. There'll be a little red flag there to say, you've already shot frame number five, so wind on you, Bernard. That will stop you taking any double exposures. Or you can take a double exposure if you like. You can engage this, this little lever here to expose the red dot, and then you can take multiple exposures, apparently. 
but I, I never do, so I don't know. We're going to load some film into this bad boy. There's a couple of sliders here. Open that one, and this one at the bottom, you open that one as well. Now you've got the film back. There's a little tab here. You pull this, much like you would to open a 35mm camera, and out pops the film cartridge. Once you've finished shooting a roll of film, this spool will be on this side. You've got to take the empty spool off and put it on this spool. This is the take-up spool. That will rotate and advance the film. Take out a roll of Kodak Ektar. Get that tapered end ready. You depress this little silver tab and it pops down that little plastic lug, which will allow you then to insert your film. And that is inserted. You take the backing paper, pull it over the face of the film back, insert the leader into one of these here slots. Make sure it's in there nice and secure. You're going to turn the advance lever. There you go. Look at that. And she's winding like a good one. You place your cartridge back into the housing, like so, until it seats. That was quite flush. And then you close the door. Press that tab down, and that is now locked. Theoretically, light tight. Advance this lever until the number one pops up in the little window there. Now apparently it will also stop advancing. There it goes. You just need to insert it back onto the body like so. Close these two little sliding levers. There you go guys. We are ready to rock and ready to roll. So frame number one failed. I think it failed. It seemed to fire. I could not wind on to the next frame. No matter what I did, it just would not let me wind on. So I took another shot, thought I did. It seemed to fire, something something made a noise. But again, it just wouldn't wind on. So, uh, hmm, at a bit of a loss, actually. There is a little black switch on the top center of the film back. No idea, I have no idea what it's for, not a clue. So I've just clicked it one way and it's gone back the other way and now the frame's advanced to number two. So, I haven't a clue. I think I've wasted one frame so far, brilliant. Because I tried rotating the film back See if that would make a difference. It didn't. Something fired, but I don't know. I don't know. Really, really don't know. So, uh, all in all, not a great start. This is going to be the next shot. This will be number three. Number one, I'm pretty sure is wasted. Number two, probably not much in number two, actually. A little bit concerned now. Anyway, this one, through the viewfinder, this one looks absolutely beautiful. Just a tiny, tiny smidge of light coming. Let's try it, try it, try it. Come on, Paul. Take the dark slide out full. Okay, dark slide out. And I think, yeah, the see, see the film's still not winding on. But if I press that switch at the back, it pops up. What that switch does, right, okay. Okay, I think we've, I think we've figured something out here. That little switch on the back pops up the, the red marker, which signifies, oh, look at that light now, shit which signifies that the shot has been taken. Possibly the, uh, the film back is not operating correctly. All right, focus, focus, boy, focus. Okay, that's not bad. I don't think that's, is that much different in light? Yeah, it is actually, 15th of a second. Oh, we could get lucky here, guys, we could get lucky. This, I'm just focusing on this dead tree, with a big old headland in the background, plenty of detail in the sky, and in the foreground reflection in the water. Let's do it, let's do it. Yep, 15th, 11. Come on, Paolo. Come on, mate. Don't balls this up. Oh, dark slide out again. Leave the dark slide out. Shot time. Yes, that's, that's working a tree, actually. Let's see if we can wind on it. We can't wind on again. It's just not letting me wind on. Pop that. Then I wind on. All right, maybe. Maybe that's the go. I don't know. Maybe that's the way to do it. Who knows? It's working now. Kind of. And this one. Quite nice. Eighth of a second, F11. High hopes for that one. Now this is frame number six. I quite like that. Foreground grasses, light on the far hills, a little bit of water in there. Quite like that. All right, we're doing good, we're doing good. My confidence is up a little bit now. We've got a nice bit of light on the, uh, on the headland. I think I've taken a couple of nice shots actually, fingers crossed. But I tell you what, we're already onto frame number seven. Jeez, man, 10 frames. It's not going to give me much playtime. Not a lot of playtime at all. It is playtime. That's the main thing. It's playtime. So, if it's playtime, let's just keep playing. It's just remembering where everything is on this. You know, the focusing knob, the, 
the wind on, everything. All right, but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. First shot of this thing, I mean, come on, let's be right about it, come on. Here we go, frame number seven, in the bag. All right, recock the shutter, try and wind on, it's not winding on, that little black button, the red, the red mark pops up, wind on, no issues. Okay, we've learnt something. I just absolutely could not resist taking a shot of that from, that's the angle of the camera there. So that was frame number eight. And that's gonna be quite nice, I believe. And this guys is gonna kick off. It is gonna kick off. Look at that cloud, man. That is gonna kick off. Now it's fair to say, I'm quite keen on this shot. My worry is, I've got two frames left. So I'm thinking, well, there's a little bit of colour now. Shit, do I do it, do I do it? Shit. F8, eighth of a second, screw it. Let's make sure we get something. Okie dokie. Tab across, cock the shutter. Wind on to number 10. We've got one frame left, guys, one frame left. Shit. That sky might just die, actually. I'm facing the opposite way to the headland. Please don't fade away, are we? Is that cloud gonna light up? Ah, uh, hells. It's got one frame, one frame. That's all I've got, one frame left. Am I worried? Yeah, how? I am, actually. Man, the shape, the shape of that cloud. My feet are piss wet through as well. Shit. Another pair of trainers ruined. Come on, light up sky, light up. Light up like the Blackpool illuminations. Come on, you can do it. I'm going to load up with another roll of hectare. We've got sunrise tomorrow morning to do. So I can't see the point in saving this one, one frame for tomorrow morning. And then messing about, trying to load it. Possibly windy. Definitely dark. I think we are done. I think we're done with the colour. Well, that light certainly didn't go off like I was hoping. It's not going off at all, really. So I'm going to shoot that shot there. That is more or less where the camera is, look. And that's more or less the shot I'm going to take now. Little reflection, looks like a little Loch Nessie monster, tanny fire type of thing. Okay. To be fair, I'm not overly infused about this shot, but that is a wrap. 10 frames, just wind on, wind on, wind on, wind on, loose as, that is all done and dusted. Dark slide in, I'll get the bloody thing in, where the hell does that go? Upside down probably, yes. Uh, dark slide in, back down, after a bit of a stressful start, I've made nine shots, definitely made nine shots. How good they are, only time will tell. I think I'm enjoying this, I think I am. I really do enjoy my Bronica, and this is a kind of similar experience, only damn sight heavier. All right, guys, until the morning, sleep well. I think I deserved a bit of a lay-in. Killed a camera or two. The, the light's not great. Due to have a baby, pre-pop photographs coming in so fast. And what I've walked through, stupidly, you will learn eventually. Happy days. Happy days. Yeah, time to move on. Okay. Playing with this beautiful, beautiful camera. Completely take out myself on my camera. It's not my camera yet. Sort of wild and rugged and out on the edge kind of place. This is going to be quite a nice shot. Leave it in there now. Leave it, Paul. Hey, them's the brakes. Make a bit of a dash. No, 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 no. Yes. Get the smeg in. I do. I like it. Tell you what. I'll tell you what. Can't waste a film. I've probably wasted two rolls full anyway. Some of us are just tougher than others. 